Hello, Keith Ruck here at VintageMachinery.org. Well guys, I think we're finally ready to get this surface grinder back over where it goes and set up so we can run it. Uh, but before I do, I wanted to kind of show you a couple little, just small improvements that we did to the machine while I had it out. There's just a few little things that was going on with it. And I've actually still got a couple little things I'm working on, but uh, just some, it looked like some little improvements and I'm gonna show you that. We're gonna move it over where it goes. I'm gonna set it up on the new riser feet that I have, and we're gonna level this machine in and get it ready to run. So let's zoom you in and show you some of the improvements. So first off, just a fairly minor electrical upgrade here, but something I think is just gonna make the machine a little bit cleaner, a little bit better looking, and maybe, I don't know if it's gonna be more functional, but at least, at least I'm gonna like the way it looks better. So this electrical box on the side here is actually, uh, direct current, 120 volt direct current that use, is used to power my magnetic chuck on the machine. Now when I bought this machine, it had this huge box that was hanging off the side right here. And inside that box was a rectifier, which is basically a uh, electronic device that converts uh, alternating current into direct current. Uh, and the one that was on here was built back in the uh, 1960s and it was huge. I mean, this thing was just gigantic and it looked like something out of a Frankenstein movie. When I first got the surface grinder, there were several people that kind of gave me a warning about that particular rectifier in that uh, it had components in it that contained selenium. I believe this right, I believe that's what they told me. And that uh, as they aged and got older, that it could uh, uh, eventually actually kind of explode on the inside and release the stuff into the atmosphere and uh, it could be poisonous if that happens. Now, I'm going off of what folks say here. I'm really not an expert in this area. So uh, regardless, it, it, was, it was just, it was very outdated. So I found a more modern rectifier, uh, which is about the size of a outlet like you would have in the wall. I mean, it's just a little bit teeny tiny thing compared to this gigantic box. Now, when I first set this up, I literally, I put a smaller box on the side I put the rectifier on the inside. I was actually plugging it into an electrical outlet on the wall uh, to get my 120 volts input voltage. Uh, and then that converted it over to the 110 or 120 volts DC that I plugged my chuck into, just like we have here. So uh, I, I went a step further while I was working on this and I actually took the box off the machine and I mounted it inside my electrical cabinet over here on the side there. It was such a small piece, it was very easy to put it inside the electrical cabinet. I also was able to get the voltage uh, to feed that coming right off of the, the, the power that also was feeding the machine. So that eliminated me having to have another plug going into the wall to power all this. And I ran it over here into here. Now on the uh, original setup up on the very top of that box, there was a light bulb so that whenever you uh, and turn the chuck on, the light bulb would light up and you knew that your chuck was on. I did something very similar with my box that was on here. We put a light bulb in the top of that box. And you know, again, whenever I turned my chuck on, the light lit up. Well, it was kind of bright and it really was kind of giving me some back shadows over here on my machine that I didn't like when I was grinding. So what I did is I went to McMaster car. This is just a 110 volt uh, direct current or alternating current uh, light. And it, this is, I, I mounted this inside the electrical box so that whenever the chuck is on, this light will light up. I don't have it plugged in right now, so I can't show you that. But this is, gives me that visual indication that my chuck is energized without generating all that light that again was backlighting my parts and really kind of making it difficult to see what was going on. So much cleaner uh, set up here and I really like the way this looks and works better uh, than what we had before. Another kind of minor thing, but also something that was just aggravating to me was that there's these, these adjustable stops on the front of the machine that you can slide in and out. And this basically adjusts the stroke. So if you're doing something small, you don't want it to, to cycle the entire width of the, of the mag chuck. So you can easily adjust these. Uh, one of these, well, there's a, basically the way this works is there's a T-slot back here in the back and a bolt that comes through here that goes to a thumb screw. Uh, and this particular one here, the original T-slot nut was no longer in there. They had put a, just a socket cap screw through there. But the problem was, was because it wasn't square in the back, 
it was just spinning and it was made it very difficult to tighten this one up uh, to make it where it would work. So I basically just was able to find a uh, square headed bolt and we were able to put that in there and work and now this thing is easily adjustable and you can easily adjust both of these in and out. Um, whereas before it was really kind of a pain. Again, very small, but this is really gonna help me make this machine more functional. Another little thing that's been aggravating about this machine is when I got it was the, the hand wheel on uh, this handle, which is the one that turns the handle or, or that causes the table to go back and forth when you're in manual mode. It's got a stop sticking out of here and I've actually pressed this out. This is supposed to be a hand wheel like this that revolves, you know, it's just like a hand wheel, but it is just, it was messed up. The handle was gone. It's been worn completely out. And I took the whole hand wheel off, took this over to my press and I pressed this part out. Now I had ordered a new handle to go in there, but unfortunately I didn't press, press it out first and my measurements were wrong and I got the wrong press on fit. So I've got a new hand wheel ordered or handle ordered uh, but this is a real easy fix. We'll just press a new handle in there and that'll be fixed. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna replace this one. This one's very similar. Uh, the handle's still on here, but it, it falls off. So while I'm at it, I ordered a couple of these new handles and we will replace both of those. Um, I thought I had it done, but like I said, I, I ordered the wrong dang part and it's my fault. I just didn't take the time to press it out first to get a good measurement. But easy fix as soon as that comes in. And then the final little improvement is these uh, riser feet, and I've got these made. That was done in a previous video. We're gonna be putting those up underneath there uh, very soon. So I'm doing this for two reasons. Number one is that I want this machine to be up off the floor high enough that I can take my pallet jack and come up underneath this thing and move it around fairly easily. When we had some difficulties with this machine, I had to move it from the wall. It was basically a two person job for me to jack this thing up high enough uh, to get a pallet jack under it where I can easily move it around, move it out from the wall, what have you. And I want to be able to do that. I'm do, trying to do that with all my machines where I can move them around with a pallet jack without too much trouble. So I made these riser feet. The second thing that that's going to do is it's going to actually raise the whole machine up a couple of inches. And I can tell you from when I have operated this machine manually in the past, sometimes you just want to work manually. I'm over here and I'm trying to crank this handle by hand and it was down so low that I'm hunched over and after standing here for 10 or 15 minutes, I really started hurting in my lower back. So by raising the machine up and getting it to a more comfortable height for my size, for, for, for me to make it worse, more easily for me to use, I think is gonna be a great improvement as well. These handles are now right here where I would reach in and they're at just the right height uh, when they're jacked up like it is right now. So um, anyway, we're gonna put these, there's three feet on this, three leveling feet. So there's three kind of large set screws, uh, two in the front and one in the back. Uh, the idea here being that it's easier to level something if it's on three feet rather than it's on four. And also, you know, on a, particularly on an uneven floor or something like that, three feet's always gonna sit perfectly flat, where if you have four feet, you know, if one is off, you can get some rocking going on. So uh, for le leveling something, three feet is better than four, and that's the way this machine is set up. So we're gonna come in here with the pallet jack we're going to pick this machine up and uh, we're going to move it over here where it goes. I get asked all the time from folks, how do I move machines around in my shop? And honestly, this pallet jack is the easiest way to move most machines. Uh, particularly if it's of a size that you can do it with. It fits up underneath things very well, unless it's uh, something like a lathe. And even with a lathe, I'll use one, but I have to use some rollers on the other end. But it's really nice. You can come in here. It's, it's got a built-in jack uh, that's made to pick up. This one, I think, is made for about 2,500 pounds, if I remember right, or maybe more than that. I can't remember. But anyway, it's easily will pick this machine up. So we got that up off of the... the Two by fours I got up underneath it. And once you get it up, you can now take her for a ride. No problem at all. It's actually very nice and steady. It's an easy, quick way to move machines around in a shop. Let's put her over here where she goes.
just about where we want to be. I'm going to move this all the way up against the wall. Let's see what I'm doing. All right. I'm going to come back just a little bit, a little bit too close to the wall. So we're probably long right in there. All right, I think I got it positioned where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a foot up underneath each one, make sure that the, the little bottom piece is sticking down enough to engage into my feet. Ease it down just a little bit. All right, that one is captured inside that foot, which is what I want. And these need to come down a little bit more. That one's in, and that one's in. See, the way these feet are made is, I mean, it's loose, but it's not going to come out, which is exactly what I want. And we are down now. And I can easily get my pallet jack in here if I need to move that machine again. All right guys, so I've got some levels sitting up on the machine now and uh, yeah, three levels, probably a little bit overload, but let me explain what's going on here. So we're trying to get this machine as level as we possibly can and I need to get it level in two directions, this way and uh, this way. Now I've got two different styles of levels. This is a stair at 98, these two. And these two levels are, have an accuracy of five thousandths per foot. So for every foot, you got five thousandths uh, is basically each division on the on here is five thousandths of an inch. Now this one here is a Starrett Precision Master level and it is accurate. One division is a half of a thousandth per foot. So you can see an order of magnitude difference in the precision of these levels. Why do I have them both up here? Because this one is so accurate that it's hard to get it rough to the right place. So I got the 98s on here. We'll get these pretty close and then I'll basically start reading on the other one. And I just, I got in, going in both directions. We'll take this one and turn it 90 degrees when we get ready to do this one. But I'm gonna start by just roughly getting it level from front to back. And to do that, I need to raise the back up. So I'm gonna go back here to my set screw in the back and I don't have very much travel because of my, I'm confined back here, but I'm going to just raise that up. That was maybe an eighth of a turn and I may not even be engaged into it yet. It may not be bottomed out in the uh, foot that I made. So let me give this thing a couple of turns and uh, I'm going to have to kind of jump back and forth because I can't adjust and see the levels at the same time. It's a lot easier if you can, but I just can't do that. So anyway, give me a second here and get that one to move. All right, it looks like we're starting to move on the vial a little bit. It needs to come up a little bit more though. Let's see where we're at now. Still moving a little bit. All right. Okay. 
just a little bit more. All right, that's going to be good enough for right now. Like I said, I'm going to come back at the end and we'll get that one, but we're at least within five thousandths of an inch there. All right, so on this one, I need to come up on this side over here. So let me uh, jack this one up a little bit. A little bit more. All right, so now I'm basically going to start looking at the bubble in the precision level, and you can see it's actually moving right now. This one is so accurate, you have to give it time to settle out because a very, very fine adjustment can move that bubble a long way. So you look on here, you know, we're right. This is showing almost dead nuts perfect, but over here, we're, well, we're probably about a half a thou from being perfect. So I'm just giving that just a tiny little bump. Give it a second to level out. It needs just a tad bit more, not much. And I'm really, really close now. I'm just gonna barely move this thing. Just a touch more. And I'm pretty happy with that. All right, but look at this bubble over here. We need to, we need to bring the back up a little bit more because when we raise this one corner up, it, uh, it got things out of kilter a little bit in that axis. So you know, keep an eye on this. You gotta, you gotta go back and forth a little bit between these. And we'll probably, after making this adjustment, have to go back to the other axis and make another adjustment over there. This is actually much easier because this machine is on three points instead of four. The four points, you drive yourself crazy doing this. On three, it's fairly easy to uh, get it right on. All right, so we're a lot better on that one. Let's look back over here now. And eh, we're still pretty good on that one. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. We're gonna rotate the master level now. And I don't want to take my fence off the back. I may have to. Let's see what happens here. That's just barely hanging on there. But you know what? Well, oh, it's moving. I need to take that back up just a touch more. I'm just making tiny, tiny adjustments on my screw and then looking at my level. It's back and forth, back and forth. We're less than a half a thou now. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna live with that. That's within probably about two tenths. Go back this way, let that bubble settle out. Okay, we need to uh, lower the... I need to lower this end over here. You can see how this is back and forth, guys. <clears throat> That's pretty darn close. Let's go back this way again.
and I can live with that right this way. Squares move one way, move the other. All right, guys, I think we're going to call this thing level. We're uh, we're checking everything out in all directions. This is within a half a thou over a foot, so uh, I'm good with that. All right, guys, I was going to show you my light back here. Uh, tell you what, let me grab something here to put on the magnet. So right now the mag is off. Turn it on. Light comes on the back. We got the mag on. Turn it off. And... We're back free so that'll give me a nice indication back there in the back without blinding me with uh, that big bright light we had before all right guys the surface grinder is back over here she's back together she's installed she's running uh, we got our feet up underneath it now much more comfortable height to work on i can actually get up under this machine and clean it up that's one of my other problems is that this machine uses a lot of oil and unfortunately, some of it gets down on the floor. You can see my oil stain down here on the ground. Uh, and it's been very frustrating that I haven't been able to get anything up under this machine to wipe that up. So now I can actually get under it to clean it, which is great. Uh, so anyway, I'm pumped. Uh, I'm ready to, I actually got some grinding I need to do, uh, but I wanna wait until I get my handles back in. I've got those ordered. They should be in in the next day or two. I can get those back on there. And once I have those on there, um, I got some grinding, so you guys are probably going to see some grinding videos coming up uh, pretty quick because we need to get this, those couple of quick jobs done. So anyway, mission accomplished. The sh grinder is for all intent and purposes back together. Like I said, I got to replace these two handles, but uh, we'll probably do that off camera when it comes in. But I'm pumped. We got this thing ready to go and uh, everything should be good. So. All right, that's, uh, that's pretty much done. Uh, a lot of, it was a lot of work to get this thing fixed and back up and going, but mission accomplished. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you later.